Tide Podcast. Here we go. Hello, hello, around the block and around the world. This is where we discuss, debate, and deliberate all things diabetes. Representing type 2, my name is Dovey Maxwell. Representing type 1 is always the vivacious, effervescent, and always in the know, Ms. Sammy Parker. Hi, Sammy. Hello, Dovey. We are almost ready to go for a hot episode, but first, this episode of JMT, Just My Type, is brought to you by what? The Diabetes App, a social what is that? app where you can find community resources, me and Dovey, and other friends with diabetes. And the winning lottery numbers and a recipe for chocolate pie. No, that's it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about attention parents. Parents, if you have children that have diabetes, we're going to walk you through it. Sammy has wonderful parents. I met them personally. I wish I could, if I had a choice to pick my parents, I would pick your mom and your dad for my own, Sammy. Thanks, Dovey. That's they're, sweet. They're yeah, that nice. Unfortunately, we don't, we don't get a choice. And so parents, if you have children with diabetes, listen up because Sammy's going to lay the 411 on you. All right. Here we go. This is for all the parents lately I've been chatting with and giving my words of wisdom that I've had. So I kind of want to go from the angle of a parent that is dealing with a child that has type one and a parent that is dealing with a child that has type two. Mm -hmm. And um, they're both so prevalent. And I think it can be tricky on both a parent and a child to kind of find that middle ground of what's an overkill and what's not. Um, What are they allowed to complain about and like harp on their kid about what are they not? And I think it's really tricky because as a parent, and I know like my parents who listen to kid are like, they she'll never understand what we go through. But as a kid and one that has grown up with it and now I'm 22, so I know what was beneficial and what wasn't, to say the least. And no, and I think that's really helpful. Yeah. And, and I, I'm glad that you're willing to share it because there are so many things. Parents, for the most part, are not doctors. Yes, they love your kids. They could be a little hard. It, this is overwhelming. This is a delicate subject, but I think uh, we have to yeah. talk about it. I'm so glad that, you, that you're willing to do it. Yeah, and it's tricky because, I mean, I have not done things perfect by any means with my parents. Like, I've definitely harped on them when they had every right to harp on me. And vice versa, where there's things that, like, I am a big girl. I can figure it out, but they can't help it because they are a parent and love me. So I think no matter what, nobody's perfect. Neither the kid or the parent are going to be perfect because, let's face it, it's your first time going through it either having a child with diabetes or you having diabetes and every day is a new day that you're living. So you've never lived it already. So it's always going to be new and nobody's perfect, but I am a perfect parent because I, I don't have kids. <laughs> That's why I'm a perfect parent. <laughs> Dobie's perfect. That's right. Exactly. Dobie's like, I've done nothing wrong. I have perfect. Nothing wrong. My kids don't hate me. I don't have any college bills to pay for my kids because I don't have any kids, but I'm a good uncle. You are. You're a great uncle. Okay. So, okay. so let's go into part one. Mm-hmm. Let's do part one for type one. Get it? Part two for type two. Ha ha. Ha ha. Okay. So parents for kids with type one. All right. This is just for the parents. I'm going to maybe be ranting. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. But we're doing it. You'll rant. Um, I'll rave. How about that? Great. Okay. Ranting so, and raving. Yes. So as a parent, first off, I know it's very difficult because number one, you want to make sure like, well, did you take insulin for that? Are you doing this? Did you do that? Do you have enough needles? Do you have like enough this? It's really tricky because I think when you are under the age of 12 Mm -hmm. or 13, you have every right to do so because your kid is very young and um, they can't make decisions for themselves, obviously. However, parents, if you have a child that is 12 and older, you're going to have a little bit of difficulty doing that because it can kind of drive you bonkers. Um, And I think that's something to just remember is that I know no matter what, like everybody has a different approach to dealing with diabetes or taking their insulin or how they count their carbs. And I get like some children might be more independent than others and other children might need the assistance or might not know how to count their carbs. And you might have to step in and kind of be like, you need to do this. Um, So I know it's subject to everybody differently. But one thing I'll just say is to remember like your child, they have it. So like they they know what they feel. Like they're the one who can feel it. If you as a parent have type one diabetes, by all means, you have every right to say everything. But if you are a parent and you do not have diabetes, you have to remember that you do not know what that in like that gut feeling of I'm high or I'm low is. And you can try to remind yourself like, no, but I know that she's I know that she's low. But we have that gut feeling. Like I know when I go low, 
if it's actually a low or if it's just because I worked out, but then the carbohydrate I just ate is going to bounce me back up. Mm -hmm. But as a parent, you're not going to know that because you don't know that feeling. Um, so I think a lot of it is just remember that your kid is in tune with their body. Again, not younger children. Totally understand that. I think parents have every right. It's really tricky. Um, it's really hard. But no matter what, even if you have a kid that's younger, don't say, I wouldn't say coming from the angle of, you need to take three units. I would say, well, let's talk about it. I think that three units would be good, don't you? Because if they are type one, they need to start learning about carbs. And if they're younger, eight or nine, like they need to start learning how to count their carbs and doing all of that without just you doing it. Um, again, I know I don't have a child, so it's really hard that I'm talking from this angle. I'm just saying from a kid's perspective, you want to feel like you're doing it with them. And not just like your parent is the helicopter parent that's like, I control their numbers. They're going to be perfect. They're going to live forever because their A1C will be perfect. Because the hot. You know, I think I think you bring up a really good point. It's like sports parents. You know, they, yes. they, they, they get in their kids and they're going to practice 12 hours a day and they're going to make the pros and blah, blah, blah. Well, number one, the kid might not want to make the pros, might not even like sports. And it's such a, a fine line because a lot of times parents want to make themselves out of their kids and kids are individuals. So let me ask you this uh, from our guests. And I'm just observing this from a type two perspective. And I got it in my adulthood. The average age someone gets type one is probably in their childhood, which not agree from our guests. I would say age maybe nine to 13 were probably most of that range. Yes. There's a lot in their twenties though now. Mm -hmm. yes. Yep. It is true. That's true too. But yeah, a lot get them younger. And so I think it is. It's exactly like sports parents. And I think that's why for me personally, like, Yes, do I get annoyed and tell my parents, you guys have to realize, like, I am an adult. I know if I need needles. I know how to take my insulin. Like, I probably sound like I'm talking like they're dumb and I'm not trying to at all. It's just sometimes I think no matter what, like, a parent stays a parent, but a kid is, like, growing up from a kid to an adult. Um, and it can be tricky. But I like to say, like, my parents are – pretty much perfect parents mm -hmm. living with diabetes. Like I couldn't have asked for better parents at all with how I manage it. Yes. Do I get asked 40, 40 questions? Totally. Um, but I think any parent that has a child with diabetes probably does. So I'm like, okay, I know that they asked a lot of questions, but it's fine. And because they're a parent, but otherwise they're perfect, which I think the reason that I view them as being great with it, because um, yeah, with sports too. I grew up dancing. My mom wasn't the psycho dance mom. She Boy, they're like, out there though. There's more you than you do. think. Yeah. She was like, you can do whatever you want to do. If you want to go to class, you can. If you don't want to go to class, then you just call them and tell them. So I had a really good happy medium and that definitely translated with my health. Um, yes. Is it tricky? Because I think no matter what a parent wants control over like a sleepover or this or that, or I just really think you should take this amount of insulin. My best advice, and this is going to come out wrong, but parents of type 1 kids, listen up. If you tell them, okay, make sure you take this insulin or you took this insulin. See, I told you all that's going to happen is they are going to lie and take different amount of insulin that they think. But they're going to tell you that, yes, I did that because it's annoying. Like as a kid, you do not want to hear your parent. You should take this. Like. My mom would always be like, let's talk about it together. So it was really helpful. But man, she should qualify like, for sainthood. You know, no offense to parents. You know how parents can be. I read something on the yeah. Dr. Phil website or some out whacked out source that's not a doctor, some some voodoo cure. And I'm going to implement it on my kid because I feel guilty that my kid has diabetes because it's a fault basically in my genetic bloodlines. A whole lot of whackness goes on here. And I, I'm just being honest. And I think you are too. Yeah. And we're trying to help parents uh, not push their kids over the edge. Yeah. I think because I think something that's really important too is like you need to remember they are human. Um, again, little kids, it's very different. I understand, but even age nine and up, like they're like more, they're smart. They're with it. I teach kids dance like in mm -hmm. a nine year olds. I feel like are 13. Like it's like, they, they know what they're doing. Sure. So, but it's really tricky. Cause if you tell them, yeah, like you need to do this or no, you're doing this or no, you can't go do this. Like all that's going to do, it's going to do the same thing as if you tell a kid they can't eat this. Then when they go to their friend's house, what do they do? They eat it. Like, sure. It, it's just it's the same thing so and i think i know that because there were there was a time i remember that i wanted to fight my mom on how much insulin and mom i'm sorry i'm telling you 
this now, but it was this one time that I was like, no, I know I will go low if I take that. And I said, I took, or no, no, I said I would go high. I remember this because I told my friend this. And I would go high, but she was like, just take a little less. And I took the amount I thought, and I ended up at like 130. She was like, see, that's why you take less. And in my head, I was like, I didn't actually take that. But it was like only, I only ever did that like one time. Now, how old were you? Let me ask you this. How, how old were you when you did that? I was 13. Okay. 13 year old, mm-hmm. especially girls. I don't mean that 13 year old boys are not difficult. Yeah. You're going through a lot of things. There's a rebelliousness that we all have as teenagers anyway. And I think, yeah. you know, you got to, you got to realize that. And I, I know parents mean well, they really do. They're, they're not trying to, to sabotage you, but they think they know better and they want the best for you. But like say in that kind of situation, it is so delicate and every situation is individual and unique. So I'm glad you're talking about this. Yes. No. And I think it's a big one. I've talked to a lot of kids lately that are like, yeah, my mom says to take less to my dad, but I'm just like, no, and I take my own insulin. So my approach is saying like, talk about it with your child. Like, ask well what do you think because my mom did that 99.9 percent of the time mm-hmm. and it was great because we figured it out together and discussed why this happened or why this didn't and whatever but that's a tip another tip if you are a parent i know that you want to give your kids the freedom to eat whatever they want but try to before they hit puberty try to switch some things out don't let them necessarily eat goldfish Okay, maybe <laughs> once in a while. Real but goldfish out of every, the bowl. Not like not every snack needs to be. Well, I want them to feel normal, so they should eat a pop tart. Okay, well, guess what? Life isn't fair. So I hate to say this, but if you want them to eat a pop tart, first off, insulin does increase weight gain once you hit puberty for girls especially. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, unless you want to start having random spikes and not understanding why. And random, they're like, why am I gaining weight? What's going on? Like, just start getting on the path of we need to eat healthy. I'm not saying healthy like salad and leaves all day long. I'm saying healthy like, hey, maybe let's have only one piece of bread a day, not rolls at dinner, a sandwich for breakfast or lunch, and then French toast for breakfast. And I know a lot of parents that do that. So try to just kind of like implement different healthy things. That's just my other thing as a parent for type one. Um, but overall, I'd say for parents with type one, just remember your kid is in their body. Don't control as a helicopter parent, discuss with them, not telling them. And then also I would say the best thing is being supportive and not scolding. Yeah. The diabetes app is an online community platform that was created to help people living with diabetes find support and information in one spot. And on the diabetes app, you can join groups and connect with other people all over the world who are also living with diabetes. I mean, for me, whenever I have a bad day, I find myself scrolling through the mental wellness group just to reassure myself that I'm not alone. The diabetes app has a resource section where you can find articles, recipes, tips, and tricks for managing your diabetes. Download the diabetes app today and connect with us right on the app. So that was my advice for parents with type one. I think we're going to need to do a part two because there's a lot to say, but um, well, I think so too. Now here coming at it from a type two point of view, Sammy, I was an adult when I got this. I don't have, I don't have parents. It's one of those things I was raised by my grandparents. I'm a homeless waif. And, uh, I think that I'm gonna need some help from you only because that I know a lot of parents have type two kids and I don't have kids myself. So I, I wouldn't know what to tell them. Okay. So don't have experience. Well, the, what I was going to say is it's kind of funny because basically I said to type ones, you know, like have them eat healthier, like parents, which mm-hmm. I firmly stand by. Um, but type two, and this might be contradictory, but I'm going to say like, yes, they should eat healthier. But um, I know it's, it's okay. So obviously for type two, like the number one thing they're going to tell a kid is, you know, like in better your nutrition, drink more water, get exercise. But as a parent with type two, I do know two kids that had type two in middle school. Do not again do the you, you can't eat that that's so bad you can only have vegetables and meat so i'm saying the opposite i'm saying for type one make them eat healthy and type two like they can have more but it should equal out to type one and type two should be eating a similar diet because let's face it a diabetes diet healthy diet and i don't mean like a diet as in you have to eat this or else you're bad i mean a lifestyle i don't like the word sure. diet, lifestyle 
that lifestyle should be everybody's lifestyle in general. For a parent said too, I know that you're going to want to be like, well, you, you ate too much sugar. See, I told you like, don't do the, see, I told you this would happen because I think that that can really get into a child's head and really kind of cause oh, it a can. Lot of trauma later. Absolutely. Right. I'm going to it jump was. in right here. It, I, it totally can get in, inside a child's head. What I, you just said it. I thought doing preparation for this episode, okay, the, the two things that a type two has advantage of diet and exercise, it can be controlled and reversed. So my suggestion would be, even though I don't have kids myself, would be to not tell the kids to do it, do it with them. You know, saying, okay, we're going to go for a walk together. My grandfather had I like bypass that. surgery. I love that. Yeah, back in the 70s, this is way before heart bypass surgery was a common thing. It was, it was pretty new. And my grandpa was an experimental patient. And it was a real big thing. They had to open up his chest. Now they just kind of go through your arm, you know, into your heart, through the vein. But it wasn't that way. They, they broke his chest open. It was very painful. And he had to go through uh, walking every day to get his circulation back. So I was probably eight. And he would go on the long walks with me and he would, ex, you know, expose the wisdom of the world. It was absolutely fantastic. The lessons that I learned from him. And so I learned to love walking at an early age. It had nothing to do with diabetes at the time. But I'm saying now, if you have a child with type two and you can go on a walk, number one, it'll it'll be good for you. But it'll be good one on one time with your child with diabetes to talk about anything in life and just get that bonding time. My grandpa passed away 40 years ago and I still remember him fondly from those walks. And I think also uh, from a diet point of view, don't tell the kid he can't have enough sugar and you're you're eating you know, everything wrong, but the kid's gotta have a diet. No, how about you eat a healthy diet with your child, show him or her that's the right way to go. And you Wait, can grow I like as a family. that a lot. These are good ones. Say them again. Yeah, and I'm trying so to think, one, you know, it's, it's practical. Go ahead. Go on a walk with them and two, eat healthy with them. Yes, and not, not just once in a while. All the time. Okay, take your child grocery mm-hmm. shopping with you. Okay, I'm going to shop for the family for the week. Let's shop together. What do you think? Okay, let's make some choices together. You know, it will be easy to choose the bad things. And then with the child, boy or girl, whoever it is, would think that they have something to do with it, build self-esteem. You know, I, I just think that would be so much Yeah, I healthier. think when you get educated and you're like, oh, so that's why. Yeah, mom, I think we should get, I think we should get, you know, brown rice instead of this i don't know like how about this Sammy? Whatever. How, how about how about counting carbs and reading labels together to train your child to do it as an adult because i have to admit i never read one label i was in my 40s when i got diagnosed it's like i don't know what a carbohydrate is or why i'm reading i buy something because i like the way it tastes i had to educate myself in you know later adulthood so if you can educate a child at any age especially a teenager you know, every every ingredient is on the package and everything that you buy. Look at it. It's right there in front of you. Turn the box over. It's right there. Let's read it together. Let's buy things together. Okay, this has this many carbs. That has that many carbs. How many can you have? Not saying you can't have any treats ever, but moderation, exercise, yeah. healthy lifestyle. And I think as a parent, I'm sure with type 2, there's a sense of, like, obviously type 1 parents will control with insulin, but I think with type 2 especially, it's, Oh my god, I'm gonna I can totally reverse this. Like they're gonna do everything I tell them. <laughs> Which Yeah. Like, yes, granted, I'm sure that is the case. I'm sure there are kids that different races, ethnicities, um, cultural groups like you uh have like different risks for type two. So let's say you are in a higher risk population for type two already. Yes, mm-hmm. there's gonna be a predisposition there that's gonna cause you if you eat five milkshakes a week from in and out, you could have a predisposition to increase your risk for type 2 diabetes tremendously. And there might be another kid who doesn't have that risk and could eat five milkshakes so we can be fine. However, right. if you know that type 2 is in your family, that's not something to be like, well, it's fine. Like, I don't. It's just something to take into consideration. And even if you don't have diabetes, but you have pre-diabetes, or you know people in your family have it, just recognize like, hey, maybe we should eat this instead of this. You know, maybe we should eat in and out instead of McDonald's. Maybe we should get a burrito bowl instead of a burrito. Like there's just ways to transition. Um, But I think it can be really tricky. And especially like even exercise, like perfect example was um, Dex 
Gerald came on the podcast. He thought he had type mm-hmm. two for nine years. They told him. Wow. And, okay. Yeah, and he just found out he had type one like six months ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, but let but they thought that because in his family type two ran in the family. But let's say he was younger and had parents that were harped on him and were like, "You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do this." Well, I'm sure by a certain point he would have burnt out. Like by the time he was 25, or let's say he was younger when he got in, and then by the time he's 20, and his parents like structured everything. He probably would have burnt out because I think already dealing with type 2 diabetes as a young child is a little shocking in general. So having to deal with that, you're just like, oh, my gosh. Whoa. Um, so for that reason, I think it's really important to also know, like, you have to kind of you can help your child as much as you can and discuss with them, go on a walk with them, introduce food with them. But you also have to realize part of the decision is going to be theirs. And sometimes emphasizing to them, like, I can't hold your hand every step of the way. And it's your health that's in your hands. Like, giving them that autonomy can be helpful. Because a lot of kids that do have type 2 diabetes or parents, it can be brought on. It typically is brought on from the way you eat with the increased risk already. So, yes, like, you have to realize, okay, well, it's in their hands to change the way they eat. And if they're not, not going to want to do it for themselves, you can give them all the tools. But in the end, as frustrating as that's going to be, you have to let them find the inner motivation. I have one final point to bring up on this topic. And I'm so yeah. glad that you thought it. And I'll give you full credit for this, uh, as I usually do, because you, yeah. you carry me on this show and I'm thrilled about it. No. A, a third party, I think, can be necessary sometimes. For example, the reason I bring it up is I have a good friend of mine who gave his son one lesson behind the wheel teaching him to drive. Mm-hmm. And it went so poorly, he hired a place and did it from a third party. The kid got his driver's license and everything was good. And I asked him, I said, really? what happened? He goes, I was so touchy. You know, he hit the brake and, and jarred the car and I yelled at him and he didn't know what to do. And then he started crying and then we had a big fight. And I thought, you know what? I'm too close to this as a father and I just wasn't the right guy. So a third party can be more patient, tell him things he has to know. And he knew that my friend knew that after one driving lesson and he went to a third party. I think sometimes maybe if you're having trouble with your child, not, not trouble, but you know what I'm saying? It could be a, a tough time, age 13, whatever it is. And you say, okay, a kid's got a diagnosis. I'm having trouble communicating. Maybe hopefully without being greedy, come to the JMT podcast, maybe turn this person onto this episode, but get a source, a third party that can come at them and talk to them. Like a parent might not be at that particular time in their life. That's, that's my suggestion. I but you got to know that as a parent. I completely agree because I think I hate to say this. I think there's some people who just maybe don't know how to, um, I guess, what would it be like? You got to know what you don't know, like and, and you got to know what you're not good at. Something with yes. it being said nicely, and it's not a parent's fault. I mean, I, I get it. Like my mom always says, every day is a new day. Like every day, I'm learning. Still, um, I'm sure there's gonna be things that I'm like, Rick, is my kid doing? <laughs> That's your life. That's um, why I love so, your parents. Because I, I mean, my I was raised by my grandparents, and pretty much, you know, eat it or wear it. This is what we have for supper. You don't like it, starve. They lived through the Great Depression. I think it's one extreme to the other, and some of us uh, have to go through the extremes. But most of us are somewhere in the middle, and it's somewhere. It's like you know, you, you love your kid, and sometimes you don't know how to tell them the right way or her the right way. So just find the. If you think it's you, great. If you think it's not you, find someone that can. There's help out there, and don't be ashamed. I agree. Completely. I love it. Um, Doby, we have a question of the pod. What is the question of the pod, Sammy? It is, how did your parents or guardians help you with diabetes? Hmm. I can't answer that question because it doesn't apply to me, but I hopefully our listeners, it does answer. We want to know what you think. Share this question and your response with us because we want to know. We want to share it with other people. So, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at just my type pod underscore, Facebook at just my type pod, and our hashtag just my type pod. But once again, how did your parents or guardians help you with diabetes or even support group? Anybody? Um, but please share, subscribe, give us a five star rating and review because we would love to get the diabetes community together, get this ball rolling. And yeah. We thank you for listening. We are well on our way to 1 million listeners, but everyone is important. Please tell your friends. And if you don't like us, tell your enemies because we're going to grow and fight diabetes. Sammy, let's put the sugar free cherry on the healthy Sunday one last time. Say la vie, baby.
This is the Just My Type Podcast.